So now we go to the AFC South where the Indianapolis Colts took Laiatu Latu in the first round. I should point out, some teams had him completely off their board. And it's important to point that out because the medical issue, there are teams that feel like he's one inch injury away from not playing. There are teams that feel like he's going to have to be load managed. There are teams that just were really hesitant about the fact that there was a medical retirement around the neck issue. So Latu to me is very hit or miss. Like it, they're, they're, We're going to have to have the context of the conversation when we figure out where he goes from there. But A.D. Mitchell in the second round who fell. Uh, Gonclaves, the tackle in the third round, feels like he can be a big contributor. Bordellini out of Wisconsin, you know, uh, absolutely feels like he can be a contributor. Like I think they got good pieces, but not knowing where we are truly on the medical for Latu is the reason I go sort of B-ish, B-minus on this. And that's fair, but to me, the Colts get an A-minus because I like the fact that they took some chances. This has been a very safe team in free agency and the draft. They're very high on, oh, we just want this certain type of character. A lot of guys off of their board, free agency, they don't splash around too much. I tried to fit a line in, uh, from rounders into my winners and losers column. If you're too safe all the time, your whole life becomes a grind. And I, I think that they got out of that box and took some chances. Latu is a chance. Like, there's no doubt there's a risk there. And to draft a guy 15th overall who's had a medical retirement in his past is not safe. But he's the one guy in this draft on the defensive side of the ball who could be a TJ Watt, who could be a Miles Garrett. Like, this guy is is the goods. And I like the fact that they took a shot on him. And then I, I, I learned this, by the way, Fitz. Add an I. Mitchell, that's how he pronounces it. I Look, he's a boomer bust guy, but I like that. I There's not many receivers in this class who are more talented. And for where they got him in the middle of the second round, and, and Ballard talking about like all the other off-field stuff is BS with him. He's just fine. We'll see. But I, I like the fact that they took a shot. If you think about Mitchell hitting his ceiling next to Michael Pittman with Anthony Richardson, I, I just really like that pick. I like the fact that they took chances. I would have liked to have seen them take some more cornerbacks. I might have given them an A if they would have fixed a cornerback situation there very confident in their cornerback situation i'm not they, they feel like if these guys get healthy they're gonna be good we'll see but to me the colts are an a minus because of the chances they took because i thought they were very reasonable risks on very very high ceiling players so jacksonville gets a a really good wide receiver in brian thomas jr unexpectedly still there at 23 in the first round out of lsu they also take mason smith the defensive tackle jerry and jones javon foster some names people might know javante prince the old miss corner uh they take so it felt like they got some, I love Brian Thomas Jr., but the rest of it to me is all sort of like, okay. Like, you know, we of our three emojis, it was like, maybe. You know, this feels like a very maybe. It's like a C plus B minus to me. Yeah, I, I gave the Jaguars a C for that very reason. It's like, maybe. Like, uh, there's a lot of things that could work out in their favor. I like the fact that they l use a lot of later picks on the defensive side of the ball. They need to address that. They need to get better over there, especially on the line, and they did that. Brian Thomas is, to me, a, a very good, good receiver that needs refinement in his game. He almost seems like he already had Gabriel Davis. He just signed him and he just signed maybe a better version of Gabriel Davis. But I think that he needs to become a better all-around receiver to, to be a true number one. But I, I like the talent, obviously. I don't hate the Jaguars draft. I just don't love it either. And I'm very much by the book with C is average. And I think this was an average draft. Maybe it's just because I'm down on the Jaguars as a whole and it uh, allowed me to not be as high on their draft class as I should have been. But to me, just an average draft, I gave the Jaguars a C. So next up, we have Houston, who takes Kamari Lassiter, the corner out of Georgia, in the second round. Remember, Houston didn't have a first-round pick. So they take second round. They traded down a couple of times. A lot of movement there uh, with the 10th overall pick. Blake Fisher, the offensive lineman, also in the second round out of Notre Dame. Caleb Bullock, the safety out of USC. Cade Stover, tight end out of uh, Ohio State. Some names people might know there. Jordan, the running back out of Louisville, that's an absolute burner, right? So I, I thought this was a good draft. And also, frankly, you just mentioned what teams you're down on. Like, I think Houston last year sort of shut everybody up. And so they get a lot of benefit of the doubt for me at this point. Like, you have a draft like they had last year. I'm going to sit down, shut up, color in my book, and I'm going to give you a B and say, I trust you, Houston. Yeah, and that's fair. I, I gave the Texans a C minus just because I look and I say, where's the pick you're just over the moon for? Where's the pick where you're like, wow, that really, look, maybe some of these picks do work out. I think the Texans are proving themselves that they're on a different path now and they're a lot sharper than they were three, four years ago as far as drafting, especially. But I looked at Lassiter as kind of a little bit of a reach when a couple cornerbacks went ahead of them and they needed a corner. So let's just draft this guy. I'm not totally thrilled with the Fisher pick. He might turn out to be really, really good. But I think if you look at this draft, you just say, 
where's the highlight here? Where's the breakout guy? Where's the guy who I'm like, wow, that was a great value. Like we do with the Ravens or the Steelers. And I didn't see that with the Texans. That's why I gave them a C minus. It's hard when you don't have a first round pick, it's hard to jump off the page. Right. And, and they didn't to me, but still C minus could get better. Some of these late round picks develop, but maybe I should have given them more of a benefit of doubt, but I said, love this Texans draft probably just because of the lack of a first round pick, but Hey, they, they got something back for that first. Titans last up in this division, JC Latham at seven, who uh, Charles uh, made very clear on our draft broadcast was their number one tackle on their board. Even if Joe Alt had been available, they wanted JC Latham. And when Bill Callahan, the offensive line coach, is the person making that decision and he's well respected, I have no choice but to sit back and say, okay, they saw something with JC Latham that a lot of people didn't see. Tavondre Sweat in the second round, somebody that has had some weight management issues and somebody that also had a DUI in this process. So, real questions. That's the reason he was even his play. There's no reason for him to be available six pick in the second round. He should have gone in the first round. But there are questions. So you look at the, those are the two big picks and the Cedric Cray, the linebacker in the fourth round, like then we start to get fourth, fifth, sixth. I, I don't have a lot of questions here, but for me, this, this is a C draft because uh, JC Latham is somebody that they respect. So I'm going to give them benefit of the doubt on that. But Devondre is somebody that's like ultimate boom or bust for me. And like, if somebody had to, to be, some, I've lived in Nashville for a long time. If you have weight management issues in a DUI, like this is a temptation city. I'm just saying <laughs> you better be ready in Nashville to come in and clean it up. Right. And that's boy, that's asking a lot. I'm just saying it's asking a lot to clean that up in Nashville. Yeah. I, I gave the Titans a C as well. A part of my problem is JC Latham. I, they're expecting him to move the left tackle. He's never done that. Not in college, at least he did in high school. That's a big ask for the number seven pick of the draft. Like he's a great athlete. He's a, a smart guy from all accounts. He's a good player, but it's still a lot to ask a right tackle. Hey, go be our franchise left tackle for the next 10 years. Maybe he'll be able to do it. I just think there's a little bit of risk involved there. And then sweat, like you talked about in the second, if I'm taking a player red flags, it needs to be a player at a, a extreme position uh, of value. And I don't think a run stuffing nose tackle is that big of a deal in the NFL in 2024. I just, I don't think that he's the kind of guy who's, he's going to, not he's not going to be Vita Vea who could kind of do it all. He's just a, look, there's some value. If you're a DJ reader and all your job is, is to stop the run in the middle and you're excellent and elite at it, there is value in that, but you need to be elite at that. And to, to use the 38th pick on a guy at that position, which I think is low value and also has red flags around him, I didn't like that. They didn't have a third round pick. I could have gone lower here for the Titans, but I do like Latham's talent. I think he's going to work out. A little bit of concern there, but ultimately see for the Titans just because I didn't love what they did. All right, so best and worst in the division. We differ on this because I think I'm going to go Texans as the best in the division. And maybe, I don't know, I'm, I'm stuck here. I, I might go Jags as worst in the division. Uh, we're going to have a lot of different answers here then, I guess. Yes, I like the Colts as the best. I just like the chances they took. And we could look back and say those were some really smart gambles, especially Latu. I think I think Latu could be a great, great fit for them. I gave the Texans the worst grade, but as I sit here talking about it, I might give the Titans the worst draft uh, in, in the division. It's a toss-up for me. The Texans didn't do anything wrong. They just didn't have a lot of volume. I just didn't like what the Titans did with, with what they had. And Latham could work out and fill a position in need and be an all-pro for you know five, ten years. He's going to have to be that, though, for, to save this draft class. So I, I, I'm going to kind of change my mind on the fly here and go Titans worst draft in the, in the division. 